Brent. Welcome everybody to uh, the Neil Facebook and Elevate Hair Instagram live, respectively on both. We have two channels, two social media platforms, so this should be a lot of fun. I'm Tim Duenas here in Los Angeles, California. I am owner of Essential Hair Academy and co-owner of Ceremony Hair LA. I am a stylist here in Los Angeles, as well as being an educator for hire. Uh, my good friend Tatum from Elevate asked me to do a, a haircut here, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be working a nice razor lob, mid-length, just kind of above the, uh, the neck here on my lovely Deborah. It's gonna be worked with my straight blade feather plie razor. Here it is, boom. Right there, my feather plie straight blade razor. There's no guard on this. I will be using my leader comb and uh, go from there. So let's go ahead and get started. Do a nice center back section. I like to say nose to nape. In your section, you want to take your time, make sure it's nice and easy. Rather do it once right and then not have to redo it again later. I like to work organized, so I'm going to be using my gold elevated clips here. my camera person. Hey guys. Uh, her Instagram is Hair by Tabitha. So if you want to check her out, she's awesome. All right, here we go. So we're going to start this a little bit less traditional. And I've been really into doing this lately, uh, working from the front back. So we're going to start around the face and we'll work the back afterwards. So we're just dividing from the high point of the head here where the comb leaves the head and where the comb leaves the head from the crown to give us that point there and it goes right directly behind the ear. Clip this out of the way here. Right. If you have any questions, go ahead and fire away. Let's get rolling. So what I also like to do, because of distribution of weight and because of density, I like to take a diagonal section so I'm going to diagonal back so I get a bit more of that hair in the front here. We're going to be working to density here, so I'm not going to take too much hair where I can't see through it, but I'm not going to take too little hair uh, where it doesn't make a difference if I cut that line or not. Straight blade razor. We're going to be working on a razor lob, so we're setting a bob line. It's going to live right about this base of the neck here, so if it was a person, it'd be just above shoulder length. We're working from the front to the back just to create a different movement and have a little bit more interest to our bob line. All right, so here we go. Comb it through, roots to ends. So we're gonna set it in right about here. I'm gonna come in with my razor, get it moving before I cut, make sure my fingers are parallel to the floor. I'm keeping my razor at, I like to call a medium stroke. So that means that my razor is not going too up and down and not going too shallow. So you can see there's a nice bit of texture there in my line. Next section. Again, we're going with the diagonal back section. This is going to help when bringing across the front to continue it into our perimeter guideline here. Working methodically, patiently, and just coming from our regrowth down into our guide. We're going to start with the medium blade. 
that means it doesn't go too high and too low. It's just a nice medium stroke. So my up and down movement, maybe about three quarters of an inch. I'll work here across the front. And I'm over directing this towards the side. So it's not living in front of the face, it's living on the side. So that'll create a little bit more length as it goes towards the face here. My mannequin is tilted away as to make room for the shoulder if it was there and slightly back to protect that length through the front. So we're gonna work right through. Just continuing that line that we already placed from the back, that guide is from the back. This is something I really enjoy doing in the salon, working this way. Um, just kind of changes it up a little bit. It's not the same as every day, you know? self-interested through section away and when I clip I like to work clean but I don't necessarily clip really tightly if this was a real person it would stretch the scalp a little bit too much and add some variance to the line that I don't really like so head is still in the same position combing all the way from my regrowth section all the way down I see my line right between behind there so then I can come through and work right to the line. The beautiful thing with the razor is you don't have to cut right on your fingers. You can leave some space and that allows for some really nice variation. So I can pull through, my line sticks together, and then I can cut right on that line there. And that gives you a different effect on the end. I've kept my stroke consistent as to not cause any excess graduation. I wanna save that for some fun later. So as much weight on the line as possible, with this medium stroke. Once again, if you're just joining us, we're doing a razor lob. We're starting from the front and then we will cut the back afterwards. There we go. So side one complete. So we'll go through and we're gonna work the other side so that we can create a nice balance between the two. For a round. And as I was tilted this way, I'm gonna do the same on this side. I'm gonna tilt it over tilt her slightly back. What that's going to do is allow me to open up the shoulder if it was my client and allows me to make sure that I'm maintaining that length towards the front. Getting some hearts. I like hearts. Yeah. <laughs> Colorful hearts. <laughs> Pop of hearts. Uh, and then also guys on Elevate's website right now everything with the code HS2020 is 20% off. So that's their irons and their scissors and um, that's cool. brushes and all their fun clips and all that. So that's a really great, generous offer there from Ted and Neil and the crew. And then these are the, the clips right here. Looks like that. Good Get 10 chunks. of them, nice tension. And we have a little Elevate Hair Vest Brush here, which, you know, we all love the Vest Brush for flat wrapping. And then we have this nice paddle brush here. That's my favorite brush. Elevate Hair Brush. Um, we have a question yeah. on our Facebook page. What straight edge do you have? So I use a feather plie straight blade razor. It's a folding razor. I'll kind of break it down in a second here. It's a folding razor. Um, it allows me maximum control over what I'm doing. I'm pretty sure Elevate selling razors as well, which would be 20% off, right? Are I they? I don't know. They I don't know. I think they are. Tatum, if you're out there. Tatum, are you selling razors? Yeah, are you selling razors? Section. I thought they were. All right. So the way, and I'll show you my razor right now. I do like these clips though. They're really strong. Yeah, they're really good tension to them. Um, I messed with them when he was coming out with them, and it's nice to have a set here at home. Tatum says razors are on the way soon. All right. So here is my straight blade razor. So it's a folding razor. When I hold the razor. Take your hand, make, I call it the Ninja Turtle, so three fingers, <laughs> palm up, razor with the blade facing towards your thumb, you slide it all the way back in, so now it's all the way back against my palm, and then I make sure it's pulled down, so it's really tight in the, kind of the, the V of my fingers next to my palm. I place my thumb on the base of the shaft here, so where the shaft and the handle join, and then I bend my finger and pinch just opposite. 
And there's variation there. You can let this float around a little bit. I really like to use my fingertip. I feel like it gives me ultimate feedback. This razor has no guard and allows me to ultimately sketch the best line possible for myself. It gives me a multi, uh, the best creativity. All right, so we're gonna work here. We're gonna work again, starting where, where we did on the other side. So if we pulled her up and we check her balance, she's living about... Can you turn her so we yeah. can see? We want to check our balance really quick, so let's get this out of the way. And we look, I like to use geography, right? So I use geography of the body. So this line, I set right about the neck, just a little bit shorter than the neckline, so that's where I'm going to set this line here. Without a mirror, you know, it's a little guessing game, but I like a challenge. <laughs> Over to open up the shoulder there. You're going to come around because I'm going to stand right in front here. Mm -hmm. I should probably crank her up a little bit. Or comfortably here. That's much better. This is out of the way as I'm not working on it. Go down. Start our line. So I get the razor moving prior to coming in. medium stroke. So I like to kind of keep a cadence in my mind knowing that I'm going to be going tick, 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 and that's going to be my rhythm. So with the razor, it's very important to have a rhythm that ensures that you have the most cohesive and consistent line. We have a question from Steph Doan Hare. Mm -hmm. She's new to the razor and is recommending, asking if you recommend starting with a guard. Yeah, that these feather plie razors come with a removable guard that you can snap on and snap off, and it allows you to kind of ease into the straight blade razor. Uh, it's a really great way to work with it. I like a folding razor over a stick razor because of the way that this movement feels here. If it was a stick razor, I don't have that kind of uh, counterweight to swing back and forth, and this is a lot more compact in my hand. So essentially, this is an extension of my hand itself. Right. Tim just recently put out some um, sort of informative videos on razor safety, how to load a blade and all of that. I don't know if you want to share that, Tim. Yeah, so I just put up a, a quick series of videos on um, Essential Hair on Instagram. So it's Essential Hair Academy on Instagram. Uh, I put a, a series of videos, three videos, basically a breakdown of how to use the razor, why I use the razor, and what razor I use. So if you guys are new to it and you want to get a little... Quick tip, little snack, you can head on over there to at Essential Hair Academy on Instagram. Um, we're not on Facebook yet, but you can go to EssentialHairAcademy.com and we have some virtual classes coming up here soon as well. We have another question from Maria Gomez. She's mm -hmm. asking, what type of hair is most challenging, challenging to work with, straight or curly? Well, I mean, I always say that hair is hair, right? So. Challenging is all kind of relative. If you're approaching something from a standpoint of wanting to be more consistent and understanding of technique, then either one is easy. So if you're coming at it from not being well versed, then it makes it a bit more difficult to work with, I think, straight hair. Curly hair lives expanded, so it's great. You can cut it in 3D. So I think that maybe straight hair is a little bit more challenging. Maybe a little less forgiving. Yeah, less forgiving for sure. Curly hair, <laughs> you can hide some things. I think that makes you challenged to be precise, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So just cutting slightly past my line. Medium stroke. Everything's over directed again from the front, so it will end up being slightly longer here around the face. Medium stroke there. Put her up straight. We're look at her straight on, and we're gonna say, "How you doing, Deb?" Check our balance. Right. I'd like to see that view. If I, can... I can move up to. <laughs> Harry. There's a mop on the floor. <laughs> uh, Claire Hardy X Hardy A Hardy X mm -hmm. loved the videos after your take over as well. They were great to refer to. Been getting some razor practice. Thanks for the education. Oh, you're very welcome, Claire. That's sweet. Hope to see you in the fringe class coming up this week. 
Betty, you want to come around this way? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to comb again straight from our guide, or from our section. We're going to comb right down. Everything lives natural fall, tight teeth of the comb. When I comb, I place my finger behind the hair section. I, let, I press that hair into the spine, and I don't close my fingers down to the last little bit of my section. That's going to have me be the, have the cleanest line possible. Medium stroke, work through any strags up here. There we go. Last section on this front side. And this also is great for those clients that you're doing this length, Bob, because you can really see where you're gonna set the face in. And the back is the easy part, right? So this shows me, okay, like I know that she doesn't wanna go shorter than here, than mid neck. So if my client, if that's the case, and she doesn't want it shorter than here, then I know how to plan when I come around the back. Instead of trying to plan and guess and say, oh my God, I hope it falls right, you know exactly where it's gonna go. So now we're in the back. And if you're new to the razor, big tip when you're sectioning, close it, fold it, put it away. That's gonna save you a lot of band-aids. And the razor cuts bleed a lot. They bleed more than a scissor cut. They don't sure. stop bleeding. They just keep bleeding, and then they bleed some more. Not to scare anybody. Don't, don't worry about it. You might bleed out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so sharp. It's so sharp. I mean, one, you, I change my blades every two to three haircuts, so my blades are very, very sharp. Another thing that I truly enjoy doing is reading the hair texture, right? So as you work with the razor more, you're gonna start noticing how dry you can work with the hair versus how wet. Hair has a, a certain give back that you're looking for when you work with the razor, uh, a certain um, texture and tension that you, you are coming to expect. Once you start to understand how far you can push that before you start shredding the cuticle, it allows you to work from wet to drier, which is gonna be really great because I know some states aren't allowing blow drying, so that's gonna give you a little bit of um, some help there as you go wet to dry. So I'm gonna kind of allow Deborah here to dry a bit as I work with her. Um, Johnny Hair, I love that you started in the front. And then Claire Hair, Hardix, I was sectioning and cut my poor doll's hair off. <laughs> yep, that's, so then you know how that happens. I've done that before. If you're not rough, meaning, see how my finger is wrapped around and I'm sectioning? You have to pull that finger up so that your blade is pointing straight towards the ceiling. You put your comb in here. You have your thumb, your pinky underneath, your middle finger and your ring finger go on top. And then I have this nice, strong comb. And then look at how far away from my client my razor is. Otherwise, if you're like this, you're gonna just slice that right off. Yeah. So nice and tight, no loosey goosey, right? All right, so we're gonna work to the back. I have her sectioned off horizontal because I'm just gonna work a nice flat section. Little pro tip for you, cut your initial section with the head neutral. You do this and then you move above where the head rounds away and you tilt her forward, two things are gonna happen. It's gonna kind of even this playing field because now it kind of brings everything to the same, right? As if it was neutral here. So this would all be cut here if this was natural fall. Whereas if I cut this forward, what that's gonna do is bring this down a little bit further than it would live if it was neutral, right? So that gives you kind of a slight undercut. It also makes the line of your bob lay straight when it's slightly expanded. Okay, so we're neutral. We're, I feel like again. that's interesting because when I was in Cosmo, it's always like, put the head down. Always. And then you're like, why do I have this duck tail underneath? That's why. All right, so we're gonna clip this out of the way. So we can see what we're doing. We're gonna work again. We know that we're living mid-neck, right? Mid-black neck piece, <laughs> the choker. She has a choker. Yeah, she's real 90s. At the end of this, she'll be extra 90s. All right, so we're gonna start in the middle. We're gonna start with a medium stroke blade here. We're gonna work the edge. I noticed it's starting to build up some hair, so I drop my section. Grab another. These corners are going to be slightly over-directed so that they're, I'm cutting square across the back. So they're not wrapping around the head shape. So they're living here. They're not wrapping around the head shape. Start our other side. Come from the regrowth section. 
using my previously cut on that side as a guide. Start moving. New section. With the heel side, meaning my side going to the left if you are right-handed, you can only work to that finger position there, so just past that second knuckle. Because this starts rotating around due to the back of the head, so then you have to start up. Otherwise, you work onto a different part of the razor and you'll kind of have a different texture. So sometimes you'll notice, oh, why is it flipping out more there? That's why. It's between that and some over direction, so you've got to make sure you're consistent on that. And I'm not really mad if I have a little bit more length. I'd rather have more length to work off than less length. So now we tilt her forward. The head is rounding away, meaning the occipital. I'm going to work a slight diagonal section once I reach the occipital. So my section now comes from high to low. And that's going to push that weight into the corner there. So you went from square or flat? I went from flat following the head shape, and I start to pivot. I call this the motorcycle helmet. That's cool. Pivots up and around till it's gonna be completely flat behind the ear here. Not sure where the motorcycle helmet well, came Well, because like the shield <laughs> rotates up and away. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're so funny. It's a real. No, I get it, I love it. small reference for <laughs> 10 people. Now it's, now it's gonna be the face shield instead of the motorcycle helmet. Yeah, right. My PPE shield. <laughs> We're in California and we're still waiting to get some opening orders, but that's okay. We get to have a lot of fun like this. I will be doing uh, another live takeover next week, so go to my page and you guys can see what I'm up to. Tapitha will be doing one. We have a couple classes coming up Sunday and Monday through Essential Hair Academy. So that's really exciting. Yeah, got lots of little hearts. All right, so we're going to go here. I am enjoying doing, uh, not being in the 10 clients a day grind. Yeah, It's right? been kind of nice. We were saying the other day, like, doing if something can, like, different. just hang out and, and do this would be great, so. I mean, don't get me wrong, I miss doing yeah, clients, clients but, but it is nice doing something different. Well, I think the, the good thing is it's allowed us to explore creativity in a different facet than we usually are able to. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing a lot of live education as well as some pre-recorded stuff, and it's really helped kind of expand where we want to be, and I think that I'm very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like we've learned a lot about like what we want in our careers, and we're learning how to use technology. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. There's times. All right, so we're going to work through here. Just like we did in the front, we're going to look through. We're going to start our hair before. Medium stroke. So feel it start to bind. So I comb again. When it starts to bind, you have too much hair, and it's very easy to do when you're on the toe side, push into too much hair. So you can see that line there. There you go. Again, corners are over-directed. This is going to allow me to have some room to remove later when I come around that side. Especially since she's tilted forward, it's better to have a little bit of length because if I went and followed that around, I'll show you on this side, it would actually round the hair up because her head is tilted forward. So if I kept that line flat, I would end up with a round bob, which is if that's what you wanted, it's shorter in the front and longer in the back, that's great. But I'm going for a little bit more of a neutral shape. So if I came around here and around, cut this here, it's going to go closer to her jaw. Right. Next section. <laughs> Harry. Next section, brutal haircut. <laughs> I have attempted a few times. Yeah, it doesn't really work so well. I've botched, botched our dog's haircut. He has short front legs <laughs> cut. One paw is cut, the other paw is not cut. His head is halfway shaved. That's a hard job. Yeah. God bless dogs. Bro. Um, can you explain the effect of going from neutral to tilted one more time, please? Yeah. G styles. Cool. All right. So if we are neutral on our initial, right? Let's just use the comb as our hair. 
So say I'm neutral here, and this hair is cut at the neck, right here. So okay. the comb is the hair. Yeah, so say it's cut here. When I tilt forward, it will, the hair would be stretched, right? Because mm -hmm. if I cut it and I pull it to the same position, the hair cut here, even if the, if the head's tilted forward, it would be stretched because now this point is further away from this point. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I cut it neutral, then that is where that will truly live, Okay. right? If I move up to another section and I pull this forward, that hair now will stretch to meet that line. Therefore, when this is released, that line will be slightly, slightly shorter than the line hanging above it, which will allow for the hair to hang a bit more neutral in its expanded form, right? So if it's all tucked against the head, there would be a little bit of an overlay on my line, but since hair lives expanded, it'll live in a flat form. So are you saying if you cut the line with her head forward the whole time, and then you lifted her head back up to neutral, you would... end up with a little bit of excess length under here mm. that you're gonna have to get later. Right, so, so that it creates like more work in the end. Exactly, okay. do it right once, you don't have to do it again. Awesome, hope that answers your question, G Styles. Said, perfect explanation thank you you're welcome all right so again we're going to look at our guide remember we're kind of cutting from hold please okay remember we're kind of cutting from wet to dry so now as the hair dries a little bit i'm going to show you what these ends look like you can see that difference there where are we on camera so the difference is they're a little bit fuzzier here right which is cool it gives me a different texture so i'm going to kind of play to that which is really great. I like to think about how my girl's gonna style this. I cut most of my haircuts to be air dried. So in order to do that, I have to be very mindful of how much weight and density uh, are on the line, as well as what my overall texture finish is. Well, that's helpful considering yep. you may not be able to blow dry. Exactly, Let's see that. Okay. Again, slightly over directed in the corner here. And the cool thing is it's a, it's a one length line, but you can add so much variation to it all in how you move your razor. Now I've kind of pivoted up. I'm almost to my front section here. I'll show you what that looks like. And I like to work both sides, so I cut a side, cut a side, and move up. That way my balance is pretty straightforward and even. Uh, the front, you can do that as you're starting out and you're starting to work from the front back. I would recommend starting and working it uh, one side than the other. That would help a lot. So here, it's not going to be a ton of hair to come off, but we're going to be working everything that lives in the back in the back. This is going to be over directed, remember, so behind the ear section here, over directed back. back. Now I'm not over directing it to the center. It's kind of living expanded. I'm not pulling this hair. So I'm making sure that this hair that lives here is cut here. This hair that's here is cut out here. It's not being over directed all the way to the center. Now we've completed the back. So if I look here at my sectioning, I've completed the back, right? My front section now, what I'll do is pull this up, pull it away. And I'm going to connect that long corner here to my front. Shouldn't mm, be much Hold hair. on a second. Get the best angle. So here's my front line. Yep. Here's my back line. So that corner, mm -hmm. I'm going to take that out. That's the corner I left for overdirecting. And that was kind of like my insurance policy there. 
Hear it? It's mm -hmm. dry. So it depends on how much texture your client can handle, right? So if I use the edge of the blade, it's not going to be as uh, shreddy feeling. If I use the flat of the blade, it would be a lot more. But now that there's a nice clean line there, work here, go up there. So you can come through and just kind of. One side is complete. Cool. Side number two. My line. And say your client had a lot more density of this, you could resection the front and work. You don't have to work the solid one. But Deborah here has a nice amount to work with. So here we go. See the corner there? See my line? See my see that and see that? So what I'm doing is connecting. So that over direction there left me that, and I'm just connecting right from back to front. Boom. Now we Turn Deb around. Deb. You look at her. We look at her shape here. It's nice and expanded. Super straightforward. Very, very commercial uh, shape right now, especially. I like the ends a little bit rough. So I don't usually do much with it. But what you can do, if it's your first time with a razor and you want to kind of mess with something, you can go in with your scissors. Um, what I would do is tilt her away as it's drying. Just kind of take a diagonal section from my crown towards the face, so it's just about the corner of the eyebrow. I'm going to comb this down. Check my line. So I'll come through. And you don't want to mess up what you did with the razor, right? So I'm going to use the points of my scissor, resting on my finger, and just Dust that little bit right there. This is gonna ensure that I don't have any scragglers. So again, if you're new to the razor, you know what? Like you don't have to be exclusive. Oh, I cut this with a razor. I have to only use a razor. Be free a little bit. So I'm just checking my connection here. Right through. And that just gives me a little bit of a sharper line if that was what I was going for. So let's show you on the other side here. Tilt her away. Again, we're gonna tilt the chin slightly back. We're gonna work opposite the way we did prior. So we're gonna work diagonal towards the face. And this also will give us kind of a counter push of weight and create a more static fall because I cut it one way and if I cut it the other way, it's gonna expose maybe Little bits of weight or something that were living on there. Take my clip, clip her out of the way. Again, that comes from the top of the crown to about the corner of the eye here. I'm gonna work everything flat. Comb from the regrowth, same idea. Hair pushes into the spine. Fingers cross over each other. Just the tips of my scissors here. So I'm just the tip just to sharpen that line up a little bit. Notice I'm not really changing the line that lives there. All I'm doing is just tightening it up a little bit. The other thing you wanna make sure of is that you're not flipping your fingers, right? So my fingers are flat. My fingers are flat, I'm not. So instead of going like that, which would create excess graduation, I'm making sure that the hair is laying flat. All right, so we work here. I'm just going to tighten that up right there. See it? Right there. We're going to tighten that up. Just a little bit of a snip there. Now at this point, hair is pretty dry. I would like to work something more straightly. I'm going to go in with some leave-in conditioner. 
or sorry, regular conditioner. I like to use things in unorthodox ways. This is sap moss. It's a pretty heavy conditioner, but I'm going to use it as a styling cream. I love that kind of that shampoo and conditioner. Oh, it's so good. But think about things outside the box a little bit, right? This is going to do is kind of give her a little bit of. <laughs> lost your mind <laughs> a little bit of separation towards those ends and then once it dries it will stay that way I can start to see my shape coming out now let's talk about your guest not being able to dry her hair right let's talk about she cannot Get a blow dry so how do we make sure she still gets that styling experience in order to do that we'll work our moisture in so we're using the sap moss conditioner first how's it look balance wise up there it looks good i'm like i think this is an opportunity to really coach your client on product yeah. application because air drying you gotta be you gotta have the right products in your hair to to just air dry it at least yeah. i do i always say you know more product to air dry than to blow dry Right, because the product is doing cuticle smoothing, the blow dry is not. So you need to add in, like Deborah here, I noticed that she has a moisture issue. She needs a little bit more hydration. Fuzzy wet, fuzzy dry. So I want her hair to have that really kind of nice separated, lived in beachy girl vibe. Really cool. I like to say my style is expensive rock and roll. Another trick that's really good is you can use your powder brush when it's wet, right? I've kind of added texture to the regrowth. I take my, my little powder brush here, I take the edge teeth here, and I come in and I'm just going to smooth just that root so that... And then so you're not bringing it all the way not through. Not bringing it all the way through. Maybe here and there, but no, not that's all good. the way through. What that's going to do is make it look like maybe she got her hair styled, right? Yeah. And then you can move through the, right, through the rest here. Yeah, I think that's cool because I don't mind the texture through the mids and ends as yeah, much. Yeah, but you don't want to look like that, you know. You don't want to fro hawk. No, you love that one. <laughs> All right, so then I'm going to use some air control for some hold here. And really kind of lace up around the face. We're going to take our Elevate Gold Clip. And we're going to use the wide tooth for a comb up front. Pull that forward there. I'm using my finger, kind of press where her cheek is here. See that? So I'm creating a little bit of a swoop. Then I'm gonna take my clip and I'm gonna come underneath the, there. So then I can adjust it if I'd like, but I'm gonna leave some out and about. So what this is gonna do is give me a little bit of lift. So I came in, grabbed a little bit of the hairline, but left some behind it and just gave a little bit of lift here. Now I can kind of piece this and play with this as it kind of air dries a little bit. That's cute. Mm -hmm. So let's organize this that way. There we go. Get a bit you can kind texture. of play on like a 90s vibe too. Exactly, that's kind of what I'm going for. You can leave the clips in if she wants to, send her home with a barrette or something. That's what they're called. Actually, right? that's really cute. A, a great idea. Maybe we should do that. Like get some cute clips and like send them home with them. Yeah, why not? Kind of. I think that might replace what value they feel they might be losing to not getting a blow dry. Yeah, you if they have something that. tangible they're taking home. Yeah. Um, someone asked if we would save this. Georgia, Ashley, we will save this. And it will be available on Neil's Facebook page for forever. forever. <laughs> Can you tell we've been inside? <laughs> Sandlot. Uh, all right, so again, see the hairline? I'm dropping some of this out. I come right behind that. I come underneath, leaving some hair out over the top. So you're kind of weaving it through. I'm weaving it through, exactly. To kind of avoid a big indentation. Exactly, and I'll let the comb do the work. So now let's kind of section this out again. Oh, cool. Tatum says the gold clips can be retailed in the salon as well. There you go. That's awesome. Thanks, DJ Tay-Tay. Um, and then... So now we kind of piece it out a little bit. And we can come through even with it a little bit. Say you went heavy on your whole product. You're like, oh my gosh, I want to break it down a little bit. Like if it's too sticky? Yeah, so I'm going to use something like this. This is Smooth Infusion Style Prep Smoother. It has a little bit more of a creamy base. It's not quite oily. Let's see. It's not quite oily, but it has a little bit more of an emollient finish. So you can see it has a little bit of a shine. 
what that will do is cancel out any excessive hold that you put in. Anytime you have too much hold product in the hair, you want to come through with a slip product, so something with a little bit more of an emollient foundation, and that's going to give you... Someone's saying slow, please. So... <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. So it's going to put a little bit more of an emollient finish in the hair, meaning an oil-based finish, and that's going to kind of cancel out. I feel like you're kind of layering in like um, like slip and then grip and then slip. Yeah, I look to, again, I look to what the hair wants. So if I say, oh, it's a little fuzzier than I would like, so I know that I have to put a little bit more moisture. If it's a little bit too loose and I don't feel like it has enough grip to it, then I'm gonna put a little bit more hold. So you kind of just gotta play that balance. Yeah, we're gonna have to get a little more editorial in the salon. Yeah, you know what? Back. Like, it, it, it's gonna make you learn product maybe a little better than when you do go back to blow dry and be like, oh yeah, remember, this one dries like this. That one dries like that. Can we give her a little spin around? I wanna see yeah. what's happening here. All right, Deb, it's time to go out, girl. To Claire go. says, simple but effective. Let's add a little bit more hold again, ready? That takes me back to Fashion Week oh, days. For sure. I love that smell. So again, on the top here, you can use the back of your brush. And just give her a little smooth um, root. Felina is asking, I missed it. Are we not allowed to blow dry hair when we get back to work? Some states are not allowing blow dries. Uh, this was just a little tip and a trick to help them. Yeah. California, uh, California hasn't, hasn't released, released anything. So we're just you know, we're mentally out. prepping. Preparing, yeah. So here she is. Da, 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 da. So a nice little expanded shape. You can see here, see how flat that looks? Why don't you lower her to the counter so we can have a white background. Now I can see. See how flat Come that lower. looks there? Yeah, now we can see. It's a so million times nice better. And, flat. and that's due to the fact that we have this slightly longer than this. Mm -hmm. Because it's expanded, it allows it to live flatter like that. Around the face, you know, tons of room for detailing here if you'd like. I'm just gonna let her dry. I'll post her on my story later. So good. All right, I'm gonna stand back up. You wanna all stand up together? One, two, three. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much again for having me, Neil and Elevate. It's been a blast hanging out with you guys. Again, you wanna get some of these stuff, these cones and clips, uh, gold clips, the ones I was using today. Uh, they're on Elevate's website. The code is HS2020. You can get this nice vest brush here. Again, 20% off everything on the website for Elevate. And then also the paddle brush I was using. So there we have it. Thanks again. I'm Tim Duenius for Elevate, Neo, and Essential Hair Academy. Thank you again, guys. Take care.